hey, 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 Mixed number factors and products. What does our essential question say, Mr. Wara? It says, how does the size of the product compare to the size of one factor when multiplying fractions greater than one? My goodness, that's a mouthful. We're going to find out a lot about multiplying fractions greater than one, less than one. We're going to take a look. Let's see. But first, we need to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. Real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says you can make general statements about the relative size of a product when one factor is equal to one, less than one, or greater than one. And the relative size meaning how it relates to its, its size. So if we look at a particular number based on that size, we can now make a statement about what's going to happen to that product if it is equal to one, less than one, or greater than one. Woohoo! yeah. Okay, let's get started, my friends. One way is to use a model. So Cherise has a recipe that requires one and one quarter cups of flour. She wants to know how much flour she would need if she made the recipe as written. If she made half the recipe and if she made one and times the recipe. Oh my goodness, what is she making over there? Look at that. Oh my goodness, there she is. She's pouring flour into a bowl. I mean, imagine that. Yes, in the kitchen. Yes. Okay, she looks like she's pretty excited about what she's doing. Okay, now back to our regular programming. Okay, so it says shade the models to show one and one quarter scaled by one, by one half, and by one and a half. So the number that we're going to keep consistent here is our one and one quarter. And we're going to scale that number, meaning we're going to resize that number by either one, by one half, and by one and a half to see what is happening here. Now, for the very first one, we're scaling it by the number one. And it says, think, how can I use what I know about the identity property? Well, first, let's go ahead and show that model. If we're going to show one and one quarter, let's go ahead and do that. I will shade one and one quarter. That says, what can you say about the product when one and one quarter is multiplied by one? Well, I have absolutely no way to crisscross anything here because it's just one. It's the identity property, which means the product is going to be equal to one and one quarter. There's no change. So let's write that down. And there you go, my friends. The product will be equal to one and one quarter. Now B, notice what's changed. We are now scaling one and one quarter by one half. And one of the things that we can think about is what would happen to a fraction if it's scaled by a fraction that's larger than one. Wouldn't one think that that fraction is going to be larger? And if we're going to scale it by a fraction that's less than one, wouldn't that give us a product less than one? Let's find out. I think that may be the question. This is think. The product will be half of what I started with. The think already gave us the answer. I'm telling you, Go Math does a great job scaffolding this here so that it makes more sense. But first, let's go ahead and model our one and one quarter. And now we're also going to show that, it, that we're going to take one half of that amount. Well, if we take one half of that amount, what we could do is we could take that model and divide it into two. Let's do that. Okay, now we've divided the models into halves. Now it does say we're going to take half that amount. So that would be like taking the half of the first model of the whole and then taking a half of the one quarter of the second model. So are we ready for our magic? Let's take, go ahead and take our half. So here's my blue and I'm going to show half of one whole. Mr. Wara, how did you do that? I know. It's magical. Math is just magical. And that's the one half of the whole. So now let's take the half of the quarter. Okay, so here's a quarter. So we're just going to be taking one of these and look at that. Oh my goodness. Mr. Wara, you made it turn green. I love green. Yeah. And now we have our half of the one quarter. So now what can you say? What can we say about the product when one and one quarter is multiplied by a fraction less than one? Well, look at our answer. You can see it's going to be less than one and one quarter, right? That's true because look what we have here. We have, right now we have, here's a half and here this is really one out of 
eight, so we have one eighth and a half, and that happens to be five eighths because we have one half here, and we're going to add that onto the one eighth, and we're going to with five eighths. But we just have to answer this question. There you go, my friends. Okay, time to move on. Okay, so let's look at C. One and a half times one and one quarter. So our one and one quarter has been our relative number, the number that has not changed. And now we're scaling that number. And that means scaling means to resize. So we're going to resize one and one quarter by one and a half. So now we have a fraction that's larger than one. And we talked about that, how a fraction larger than one, if it's being multiplied by a number greater than one, then that fraction is going to be greater, right? Not going to be less. In our last example, the product was less than one and one quarter. Now we have to assume it's going to be greater. And they show this one and one, one times one and one quarter plus one half times one and one quarter. And they're showing it this way because we're breaking that one and a half apart. We're going to multiply it by the one and one quarter and one, and then we're going to multiply the half by one and one quarter. And you may recall that is the distributive property. We're just distributing the terms, splitting one and a half up into two pieces. Well, let's first show our one and one quarter. And that is going to be the expression represented by one and one quarter, right? And now we're going to add, we're going to add that product of one half of one quarter. We're adding because remember, we were using the distributive property. So let me go ahead and again show one and one quarter. Now I have my one and one quarter. It says think the product will be what I started with and a half more, okay? Helping us out. So we had that one and one quarter and it's going to be a half more. Okay, I like how they phrase that. Now, because we're taking one half of that amount, we're going to go back and do what we did the last time by splitting that model in half. Let's do that. And there we go. Now we split the model in half. So let's take a half of that one and one quarter. Okay, so here we go. Let's first start with our blue. We're going to take half. Remember my magic? Ooh, yeah. That never gets old. That's right, my friends. It does. And now we've taken the half of the whole. Now we're going to take a half of the quarter and look at it's green green like kermit the frog right it's not easy being green okay all right mr war we don't need to hear kermit the frog singing now we have our one and one quarter okay and then we also have remember in our last problem we determined it was like five eighths because we're taking one half and another eighth and we're getting that equals five eighths. So yes, we ended up with more. And like the, the thing says, the product will be what I started with and a half more. So what can you say? What can we say about the product when one and one quarter is multiplied by a number greater than one? I hope you're thinking. Yes, the product will be greater than both the factors. Let's write that down. Woo -hoo. Yeah, yeah. All right. Nice. What does this say here, Math Talk? Explain your answer to part C. I think we already did that, my friends. I think it's time for Page Master. Yeah. Oh, look at what we have here. It says connect. You can also use a diagram to show the relationship between the products when a fraction greater than one is multiplied or scaled, resized by a number. Oh, I like that. They put in the parentheses so it helps us remember what the word scaled is. So another way use a diagram. Okay, it says Jake wants to train for a road race. He plans to run two and a half miles on the first day. On the second day, he plans to run three-fifths of the distance he runs on the first day. On the third day, he plans to run one and two-fifths of the distance he runs on the first day. Which distance is greater? The distance on day two, when he runs three-fifths of two and a half miles, or the distance on day three when he runs one and two fifths of two and a half miles. And it says to graph a point on the diagram to show the size of the product. Then complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Okay, so to graph a point on the diagram to show the size of the product. All right, well, first things first here. It does say down below, uh, the product of one and two and a half will be... That's going to be equal to, won't that? Yeah, so we know that much. Maybe we could just put that in right now. Okay, because we know about the identity property. Now here's this think, locate two and a half on the diagram and shade that distance. Then graph a point to show one 
of two and a half. Okay, so I think this problem here, uh, they keep referring to what I would call a number line as a diagram. Okay, that's okay. It does keep referring to it as a diagram. It is a diagram. It's a type of diagram, but I think I might just use the name we use, which is it's a number line. And number lines are great when it comes to wanting to compare, add, subtract fractions. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, it does say think, so locate two and a half. And I know where that is. So let's go ahead and shade that distance. Okay, so I've showed that two and a half on my number line and I shaded that in. And then I also uh, graphed a point to show where that is. So let's go on to B. B says if we take three fifths of that two and a half. Okay, and again, this is completely scaffold. So let's look over to the think. It says think, locate two and a half on the number line and shade that distance. Then graph a point to show three fifths of two and a half. Okay, I like this. Okay, so I went ahead and I shaded again on the number line. You can see my two and a half. Now I graphed the point at three fifths. Think of three fifths. It's broken up into five equal parts. So if I were to look at that, you can see I would have one, two, three, four, five, okay, indicated by the arrow. So those five equal pieces, so I need three of those five, and that would put me right there at three fifths, and that's showing that amount. So you can see that the three fifths of two and a half is actually less than two and a half, where A was exactly two and a half. So by our statement, the product of a number less than one and two and a half is less than. Let's write that in. Very nice. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, and now we move on to the very last one. Now we have that number that's larger than one. We have that one and two fifths times two and a half. This is much like the very first page that we worked on. They use the distributive property showing, yeah, let's do the identity property that one times two and a half first. And then we're going to add that additional uh, two fifths of two and a half. Let's go ahead and do that. However, first it says think, locate two and a half on the number line and shade that distance. Then graph a point to show one of two and a half. Okay, we need to do that. And then we're gonna show and two fifths more of two and a half. Shown my initial one of that two and a half, which is two and a half. And now I need to go ahead and show two fifths more of two and a half. Okay, now you see I, I have found two fifths more of two and a half. Now we determined that a half was the same as one fifth of two and a half as indicated before by that arrow. And now you can, you can see we have an additional one fifth and another one fifth. So that's gonna bring us to three and a half. So of course, the product of a number greater than one and two and a half will be greater than two and a half and greater uh, than the other factor because that number is greater than both those factors come together. And finally, so one and two fifths then of our two and a half miles is a greater distance than, in this case, uh, three fifths of two and a half, which was the question up above. Let's take a look. We don't do this all the time, but let's look at important information and imp information that's not so important. Like here, Jake wants to train for road race, not that important in this particular problem. He plans to run that two and a half miles on the first day, that's really important. Okay, on the second day, he plans to run three fifths of the distance he runs on the first day. Again, that's important information. On the third day, he plans to run one and two fifths of the distance he runs on the first day. Again, this is important information. Now we have our question, which distance is greater? The distance on day two when he runs three fifths of two and a half miles or the distance on day three when he runs one and two fifths of two and a half miles. And now we know that yes, one and two fifths of two and a half miles is more on day three. As stated here, we put one and two fifths of two and a half miles is greater distance than that three fifths of two and a half miles as indicated in the problem. Because our fraction that was scaling, the scaling factor, that resizing factor, one and two fifths is larger than one, where three fifths is less than one. And the last thing I wanted to show on here is to maybe show a circle around that question. There we go. Just trying. It was kind of difficult to put that question inside my red circle. But as you can see, I was trying to separate the problem and trying to get out the most pertinent information 
Mr. Wara, it's time. Oh my goodness, is it really? Oh my goodness, I'm talking to myself again. Yes, that was my alter ego there. Yes, it is time, my friends. It's time to say, Hasta luego. That's it, my friends. It's over. El fin. Until another day. Until we meet again, my friends. Now, as always, live long and prosper. <laughs>